Hello, this is artist Kendra Fleshman. Welcome to the studio. Yesterday we worked on some paper weaving. Today we're going to learn how to make a weaving using yarn. So let's get our supplies together first. We're going to need cardboard of some kind, so I recommend using an old box and just cutting off one of these pieces or just cut apart the box so that you have a nice cardboard piece. We're going to need scissors, some yarn, and some tape. Okay, I think we have all our supplies. Let's get started. One supply I did forget to tell you was you're going to need a ruler and a pencil as well. So cut off a piece of the cardboard so that you have a nice rectangular piece. Uh, then you're going to use the ruler and you're going to measure out on each of the shorter sides, you're going to measure out some lines and we're going to make some cuts. So now I have my little cardboard loom and we're ready to add some yarn. So in weaving, there is a warp direction and a weft direction. So the warp goes the long way. The weft is what you weave back and forth through the warp. So we're gonna add our warp string first. And I would definitely choose a string that's pretty sturdy I wouldn't use thread, and I also wouldn't use a really, really thick yarn for your warp, or it's gonna be a little bit tough to weave. So the first thing I wanna do is secure the yarn through the end cut. I'm just gonna pull that pretty tight, and I'm gonna take a little bit of my tape. If you want to, you can even tie a little knot right here but I find that tape usually holds it pretty good. You don't want to pull it so tight that you bend your cardboard anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna go across, directly across to the other notch and pull it behind. Now I'm going to, I'm not gonna go across the back. I mean, you could, and you could weave both sides and it might get a little tricky when you take it off the loom. There's ways to do that. But let's just do it this way, where we go across, go through here, then wrap it around that next notch. Your string should be pretty taut, okay? You should be able to hear them snap, but not so tight that your cardboard bends, because that's gonna be a big problem, so don't, don't get it too tight but you also don't want it super loose or your weaving is, is gonna be really difficult to do. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this off. And I'm gonna go ahead and secure that with some tape. If you make it long enough, you could even tie these together if you wanted to. But if it starts to loosen up, it's nice to be able to tighten it. So I find tape works really good. Okay, so now we need to work on the weft. So I would recommend taping the end of your string. As you work back and forth, this end is gonna get really frayed. So we need to tape it a little bit. Um, in, when you weave on a loom, on a wood loom, you use something called a shuttle, and it carries all the thread or the string or the yarn back and forth. It shuttles it back and forth through the loom and through the warp strings. Uh, we, we're not going to use a shuttle, we're going to make our own little tape shuttle. And I need to start by securing the thread, or I'm sorry, the string, to the warp down here at the end. 
So I'm going to tie this in just a double knot. Simple knot. And then I'm gonna find my end. Here's my end. Okay, this first string we're secured onto, so we don't really have to worry about over or under. So just, I would just make this be an over string. Imagine, just like we did with the paper, first one's over, next one's under. Over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Okay, go ahead and pull your string all the way through. When you get it to where it's about like this, use your fingers, scoot the string down at the same time that you're pulling it. Don't pull it too hard. In fact, if you want to, just back this off a little bit because what's gonna happen is if you start to pull your string, your weaving's gonna start to curve in like this. Okay, so if you can see that, we are over that last string. So what I have to do is start under that string. So I'm gonna go underneath that end string. I'm gonna do exactly the opposite of what we ended up with. So we're gonna go under, over, under, over, under. Just work your way across. Don't forget to pull your string through. Again, when you get to it being about like this, go ahead and push it down here and then very gently pull it. And I'm gonna push this backward a little bit. Okay. All right. We ended up underneath, so now we need to go over this first string. Push it down, get it just a little bit tighter. Okay, I think you get the idea. Let's speed this up and then I'll show you how to tie on a different color of string. Let's do another square knot. I'm gonna switch the colors. Okay, so I'm gonna take the green. I'm gonna put it across or on top of the orange. I'm gonna push it underneath. Then I'm gonna take the green again, go across the orange, push it under and through. So you should end up with two loops kind of interlocking. That's your square knot. So I'm speeding right along and I, I got a tangle in my yarn. So let's talk about tangles because it's going to happen. The best thing to do is don't take it and yank it because you might tighten it up. Find the knot and just gently pull it apart, loosen it up, kind of untwist it with your fingers. There you go. So if you try and force the knot and pull really hard, sometimes you make it worse. The other thing I wanna make sure that you're checking is don't pull really tight on these end pieces or it's going to start to, to curve in. If that happens, it's not the end of the world. It's just, you're gonna learn. Um, and as you're weaving, you'll get better at just leaving these end pieces a little looser. Okay, let's keep going. At some point in your weaving, you might want to add some beads, um, just to you know, make it a little more exciting. So you know, uh, think a little bit about your pattern. So here I have the multicolor, and then I did some green multicolor, and then the orange. So this would be a good point for me to put some beads, and then continue a pattern going this direction. 
So to do that, what I wanna do is go ahead and, and start to weave. And you might want to figure out your color pattern and lay it out. So I'm just gonna go over this one under and I'm gonna pick up a bead. I'm gonna pull it through. Now I'll be able to adjust this a little bit, but when I do the next row back, it's going to kind of secure that a little better. So I'm just gonna keep weaving. Now I went under here, over, so I need to go under this one. Pick up another bead. scoot the yellow and scoot this yellow here. Okay, that's, that looks pretty good. All right, then I'll just start working my way back. Whoops. <laughs> we'll try that again. What are you doing, Mrs. Fleshman? There we go. So once you've finished, then we have to figure out how to take it off of here and keep everything from falling apart. So what I would do first is tie off the end of your string that you just got done. make that a double knot just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. You can always put a dot of glue on your knots too and that will keep them from moving around. Okay. All right, so let's undo our tape on the back. different ways for you to finish off the weaving. I'm just going to show you one, one method. All right. Just going to take this off, slide the loops off, and if you're gentle, you can use your loom over and over again. Okay, so these are off, but this one at the end is loose. So if I were to pull this, it would come all the way through. So it just so happens I have this little piece here from when I started, so I'm just gonna tie that off. I'm going to take this part, I'm just going to flip it over, slide these off. All right, so now it's off of the loom, but it's still kind of fragile. Uh, all these parts here can slide down, so we need to fix that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push everything this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip these end loops and I'm going to tie each one of them. 
to kind of push it all together. Okay, so that's pretty much done, but this end here is not looking real great. So there's some things you can do. You can, if you've got a, a pretty wide needle, you can thread some yarn through, or maybe you might be able to even just push it through and start to add some yarn on here to kind of give you a fringy end, fringy bottom to it. So I'm, I'm picturing this hanging kind of like this. Okay, so if I tie those all the way across, that's gonna look pretty good, but then it'll look even better if you can take and separate these strings, and this takes a, this takes a little while. All right, so I added some more fringe down here with some of the different colors in there. Um, I think it looks pretty good. So let's talk a little bit about the colors that are in the weaving. So I chose a multicolor yarn. Uh, I really like this yarn because it had warm colors. You've got your rust color, your orangish, your yellow, um, and then it goes to like a deep orange color, and then it goes into cool colors which are like your turquoise color, kind of a teal. Um, not quite blue, but just kind of the really uh, green color. So I like that because it has warm colors and cool colors. And then I thought for a little pop of color, I would do this kind of limey green. It's not a perfect match, but I do think when you put it together in the weaving, it actually works really well. And then some of the orange that does match to kind of give us a band in the middle for our pattern. The nice thing about the multicolor yarn is it ends up making stripes and patterns just in the weaving itself without having to change the yarn all the time. So the, the multicolor yarn can be pretty fun to play with. Well, that concludes our yarn weaving tutorial. You should have a finished product, something like this. Uh, you could mount this on the wall. You could turn this into, I don't know, some type of cool jewelry or band. Uh, you could join pieces together and make a scarf. So it's pretty handy. Or it could just be an art piece all by itself. So I'd love for you to experiment with some different size yarn, maybe some really big yarn, and see what you can do with that. Um, lots of different colors. So, you know, all you need is a cardboard loom and you need yarn for your warp and your weft, and then you're good to go. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. This is Kendra Fleshman. Bye-bye.